Wouldn't you want to know what it really takes to make it to the top? Through all the pain, blood, sweat, hard work, these are their stories. The good, the bad, and the in-between. The truth, beyond the sport. Today, we have a very special Beyond the Sports story to share with you. But first, we would like to thank Plantation High School, their football team, and the Curtis family for allowing us to honor the life and memory of Gary Curtis, who held a very special place in many people's lives and was taken away from us all way too soon. This is his story. Gary Curtis was a graduate of Plantation High School and a proud contributor and supporter of their entire football program. Even through his disease and long after he graduated, Gary continued to influence his classmates and coaches, and he always inspired his fellow peers. Gary's death has left many living their lives in his honor and in his memory. Gary, uh Develop, he had muscular dystrophy was his disease and there was it, it limited his mobility he was wheelchair bound and he always uh, wanted to be a football player so that's what drew him he loved the game of football so that's what drew him towards us and uh, ever since he was a freshman here in high school he's always been involved in our program I mean the fr I remember the first day when he came up to me he rolls up to me and goes coach my name is Gary I want to be a, a, a manager on the football team you know, and I, I didn't know him, and uh, we just developed a relationship over the last, I would say, uh, six to seven years. And he's become very close to me and a lot of kids on the team. So, uh, you know, it was very sad when, you know, he's not with us now anymore. He was always there, and uh, he was always, I mean, so positive. If we had a tough loss, he was still like, uh, you know, next week we got to get better in practice. You know, we, when we had our victories, he was right there, you know, cheering with us. So uh, our last game of the season, we won the Mayor's Cup. We beat South Plantation, and we got pictures with Gary, and, you know. So I'm just glad that uh, he was able to go out, you know, with that win. And uh, he was, you know, looking forward to this season. He was always Plantation Colonels. That was, that was him. <laughs> it's, I have multiple memories. I mean, the first time uh, we back when Miramar High School won a state championship, we unfortunately had the uh, opportunity to play them in a the regular season game, and uh, we went down to Miramar, and they beat us pretty bad. And, and Gary uh, had his jersey on, so he comes up to me in the third quarter, and he goes, we were losing, and he goes, uh, Coach, here's the jersey. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> so, uh, and I got upset with him. I said, Gary, we're here in a situation where you know, we're struggling, we're supposed to be a team, we're supposed to stay together. And he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, I'm leaving, coach. I, I can't take this anymore. So I wrote him uh, that following week, a couple of days, I, like I was still mad at him, trying to teach him a lesson. And he realized, and after that, uh, he came to me and apologized the next week in school. He goes, coach, I am so sorry. I'll never do that again. I'll be with you guys through thick and thin. And uh, so he learned a lesson. It was a little funny story and uh, he learned the lesson. and. He's always been with us since then. He changed my life. I mean, just uh, not to take things for granted. Uh, he was always uh, just never complained, dedicated. Uh, he rode, He lives down the street here from the school. He rode his motorized wheelchair every day. If it was raining, he would put on a rain, uh, rain gear and still come down Sunrise Boulevard to Plantation High School every day. Just so dedicated and uh, you know, just never complaining. So I think about him often. Even uh, the last couple of weeks of his life, I mean, I really was reflecting on how, he, what, the way he lived, what it meant to our team and to me as a person, you know. I carry it forever. Uh, we're going to do several things. Next year, we're obviously going to wear a patch on our helmet with his uh, name and the number. He was always, he always wore jersey 48. So we're going to honor him in that way. We're also going to honor him by uh, starting a Gary Curtis Memorial Award that we're going to give out every year to uh, the kid who displays those attributes that Gary had, you know, the commitment, the dedication, and, you know, just that desire. So we're going to honor him in that way also. Uh, I'll never forget him. He's just a great kid, and uh, his memory will be, he'll live on for a long time here at Plantation High School.
Nothing stopped Gary from waking up each day and living it to its full potential. He lived through each day with one word in his mind, undefeated. For Gary, I believe undefeated meant that you never quit. You know, my last conversation with Gary in the hospital, you know, he says to me, you know, I, Mr. Shazer, I've got to, I've got to get my story. I want the world to know my story. Well, Gary had been hounding me for about two years, you know, about writing a book, and I, I had given him pointers, and you know, uh, he just never got around to it, and you know, kind of was coaching him, and so now he understands that, you know, his time has really become limited. He says, I, I want the world to know my story. I said, what is your story, Gary? He said, I'm undefeated. And he said it with you know, such great passion and emphasis. I said, what, what does that mean, Gary, you're undefeated? He says, I've been battling this disease for a while, yet I never gave up, I never quit. He says, so I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated, right, Mr. Shazel? I said, yes, Gary. You, you undefeated, you never gave up, you never quit. And so for Gary, I think undefeated meant that no matter what obstacles life present you, what no matter what mountains may get in your way, you never give up, you never quit. Because if you never quit, if you never give up, you're never defeated. And so that, that seemed to be the way he thought and processed you know, this whole idea of undefeated. No one can defeat you, nothing can defeat you if you never give up. Like the other players, um, Gary impacted their life, you know, just by seeing how he went about his everyday activities. You know, every player saw Gary walk, well, rolling around in his wheelchair. They saw him trying to do things that he probably wasn't able to do. They, they saw him, you know, encouraging other players. He encouraged them. He's on the sideline at practice, rolling up and down in his wheelchair. You know, he gets on guys when they're, when they're lagging. He, he tries to pick up guys when they're, you know, having a bad game, doing a game where, you know, something is, the game is not going our way or, you know, just a bad play. He, he's there, you know, steady trying to encourage them. And for them to see someone again who is, um, in, in a position of dis, being disabled, yet he is still saying, keep, keep fighting, guys. Don't give up, you know. And he's challenging them and pushing them in practice. I think, my, like my son, he was just encouraged by Gary. Gary was a, a figure of inspiration. My first encounter with Gary, it, it was a day I, I'll never forget. I'm coming up to Plantation High School, and it's pouring down raining. And I look and there's this kid on the sidewalk in a wheelchair and he's just moping alone and it's raining. I mean, pouring down. And I'm thinking to myself, I just, I'm having a conversation in my own mind. What is this kid in a wheelchair doing out here in the rain? I'm not talking about a drizzle. I'm talking about pouring down. And so I pull on up to the school. I go into the uh, football coaching office and I'm in there you know, talking with Coach Davis. And then here comes this kid coming in the wheelchair that I saw rolling down sunrise. And I look at him and I say, well, who is this here? Steve said, that's Gary. And so then, you know, Steve gets, Coach Davis gets a, a towel and stop drying him off and everything. But I said to myself, this is crazy, yet at the same time, it's incredible. And this here is an image of who Gary was, his character, um, no matter what it was. Rain, his disability, he was determined to get here and be involved and be around this football program. A kid. I've coached football for many years. There are kids who missed practice because it was raining, <laughs> who, who did not have a disability. And this kid was so committed um, to this program and, and doing what he can to help and make a difference in the lives of others that he would, he would ride his wheelchair in the rain to get here. That, that's a picture 
um, that will forever be with me of Gary. Whether he was popping up at practices, games, or in the hallways, Gary had to be around football. It kept him motivated, excited, and gave him something to live for. Gary had many dreams, and now his dreams will live on through his friends and family. He motivated me a lot. He always told me I gotta be number one in the field and in school. Every like, even if like, say report cards come out, he always wanted me to get no low, lower than a C. But as soon as I turn in that C, <laughs> he always been on me a lot, so I miss him. He meant a lot to me. He was like my bigger brother. He always pushed me on the field. He pushed me everywhere I go. So, and I, I want to say I love him and I miss him. I say every single day in the off season, me and Gary, Gary even brought brought a um, he bought a agility ladder. So out here, he out here with me every day, grinding every day, getting it with me because he wanted me to be the best. So like every day, me and Gary out here, he can't he can't demonstrate it for me, but uh, like I don't know how to explain it. He he trying to sh he even recording it on his iPod, trying to show me how to do the agility drills. He was he was he meant a lot to me. He was he was more than a, he was friend coach. I mean. I'm always talking to him, calling him, asking him how he's doing. We on Xbox Live together playing Madden. He was still somebody very special to me. Um, just seeing Gary, you know, he couldn't walk. You know, his drive to always, you know, his one goal, he said he, he always wanted to walk and just play football again. And I think, you know, us football players, we take it for granted because, you know, we come out here every day, we have fun, you know, we practice, and, you know, we take it for granted that we can walk. And, you know, just seeing him and how he was and how he wanted to do the things that we can get up and do every day, it just always motivated me. Uh, Gary, me and Gary, you know, I, I, you know, I played down at PAL, and Gary, he's been, you know, in the, you know, with the team and everything for so long at PAL. Then he came down here with me, you know, we all came together. So, you know, just, I mean, uh, it, it's tough, but, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, he meant, he meant the world to me. Gary meant the world to me. I mean, just to come out here every day, you know, Gary helped my phone. You know, just little things like that, you know, because he held my phone. He did this for me. He did that for me. Gary was just, he was so special to me. Um, you know, it's, just, it's tough at the same time because, you know, I, I seen him when he was in the hospital. And, uh, you know, one of the days before he passed away, you know, he kept asking for me. And I felt bad because I couldn't get there. You know, I felt like I had time. And then, you know, I planned on seeing him that week, and then I lost him. So, you know, it, it, it's tough for me at the same time because, you know, like I said, we take it for granted. And we come out here, and I know how bad he wanted to play football. It is really tough, and he meant the world to me. I wish I could just, you know, I could tell him this over and over again. You know, you know, I told him I love him, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's times where you wish you could go back and tell him so much more that you meant. Uh, I mean, it, it, it was tough because, like I said, you know, he that Thursday he kept asking for me, you know, where's Jay, where's Jay, and all I could do is tell those boys well, I couldn't make it, but tell him I love him. And, you know, he told me he loved me, you know, he loved me too, and I planned on seeing him that 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 Tuesday or that Thursday, and I was actually I was, you know, chilling, getting ready for lunch, and um. You know, Coach Davis came to me and told me, you know, he passed. So, you know, it, it hurt me more to know that, you know, man, I can't say I was going to see him that Tuesday, but I knew I was going to see him either that day or Thursday. And I, like I said, it just hurt me because, you know, I felt like I had a burden on my heart because I felt like I had time, but I didn't. So, you know, I wish I could have. It's a lot of things I wish I could have did, but, you know, it is. I'm not going to beat myself over it, but I know that I love him, and, you know, we're we going to do it for him. Every time, you know, I catch a pick or I make a play, you know, I'm going to point to him, you know, he, like I said, he meant the world to me. And, uh, you know, he always, he always talked about winning that state championship on Xbox Live. So, you know, I, I miss the conversations, you know, playing video games with him. But, you know, we're going to get it done for him as a team. We're going we're gonna to get it done and work hard. One, two, three.